has ended up this way. But of course, the first step in making that happen was, of course, the Glen, Waddy Grounds Glen, <clears throat> beating Kilku by 112 to 16 at the Athletic Grounds in Armagh. They win their first ever Ulster title and they avenged last year's extra time defeat at the same ground where they were beaten, of course. They were fantastic here, Jason. I mean, like they absolutely dominated from the start. They went five points to nil up, dominating. I mean, very eye catching scores right off the bat from Connor Glass. Connor McGuckian, of course, was man of the match. Jack Doherty as well. That start for the Glen, I think, was crucial. They burst out of the traps. Yeah, it was vital. And yeah, there's a little bit kind of going into it where your mind is playing back to last year. And that wasn't it, Jerome Johnson, I think, got the, the goal that sort of crushed them. Uh, in that extra time game so yeah they needed a fast start and I suppose maybe over the years of watching Ulster football a fast start is not something you get too often so I think that also adds to the excitement that's going to be in the semi-final because Glenn really did come out of the traps uh, and for for the game as a whole it kind of made it because I think too often we've seen too many club games maybe in Ulster in particular which are blanket defence and Everton whereas Glenn really did come out of the traps. As you say, Connor Glass was was something else. Um, I think some of the AFL experience down under kind of yeah. helped him out a little bit um, as that game went on, especially when the physicality and stuff came into it that, you know, he's never going to shirk away from that kind of thing as well. Um, oh, no, I've never seen I've never seen a, an athlete come back from the AFL hmm. and have it's just an immediate impact on his club and his county. I mean, Connor McKenna... I think deserves a shout for that. I mean, let's not forget he stuck two goals away in the semi final for Tyrone as they went on to beat Kerry after extra time. Like his impact on their All Ireland win that year was huge, even though sometimes he didn't play the best of football. But I think Connor Glass just, he's just imperious. I mean, he's once in a generation type player. Like I really mean that. I think he's just ridiculously good. Yeah. Uh, I suppose in the fact that Derry haven't hit the, county heights as such of like say Dublin or whatever that he doesn't get mentioned often in the same bracket as like Fenton or any of the as you said sort of players of this generation who are you know the top drawer but you know put him into put him into a team and the team just instantly changes because he has the influence he has the height he has the skill as I said he's never going to shirk out of a tackle he, he's got a bit of everything and to add to that then he's also a scorer like he's not he's not afraid to burst forward when he needs to at the same time he'll track back and do a defensive job so like I think Glenn like if I put my money anywhere I said at the very start and you know I wouldn't be the only one that whoever wins Ulster will win the All-Ireland even despite Shane Walsh and Kilmacud and everything else that goes with it and I still think Glenn are absolutely the team to beat and what happened at the weekend I'm, I'm more convinced, I think, that they will win it. Um, yeah, the goal came, you know, near the end when, you know, Kilku were desperately looking for something up the other end. But I don't think the scoreline flattered um, Glenn too much. You know, six points. It looks like, you know, they. it was a tough enough game. In reality, I think they could have won by, by a lot more. Now, penalty miss, of course, was a big turning point yeah. in the game. But at the same time, I think, they're going to be hard stopped and as I saying like I'm a big Malachi O'Rourke fan um, someone told me recently I think at the, after the game whatever it was that he did his thesis on something like oxygen levels in GA players blood or something like his attention to detail is obviously outrageous yeah. and the success he had with what do you call those lads uh, the loop and aerial cure on it like he, everywhere he goes he brings success so for anyone who's maybe knows Malachi Rourke, you know, older than you or I, you know, would probably not be too surprised. But like for me, it's just incredible that everywhere he goes, something happens. Like whether it's three in a row, Ulster finds at Monaghan or whatever it may be. Um so winning the All Ireland, I think, here with Glenn, it, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, but it would be another, you know, notch on the C V really more than anything else. But yeah, for for me, Glenn are are definitely the ones to beat, I think, anyway. I don't know about you, but for me, they are, anyway. Yeah, no, I I think out of... I think any of my Cullen, Kilmichael, Crokes and the Glen could beat each other on any given day. I, like, I do think that Cairns are a little bit out of their depth here. I mean, obviously, I could be made to eat those words, but 
I do think Moy Cullen, Wally Grimes Glenn, and Chemical Crokes have just <coughs> absolutely obliterated everyone in front of them. Bar, of course, one or two slip ups from Moy Cullen where they look like they might be beaten by Strokes Town. And, you know, they were held for long stages by Turla Strand then in the Connacht final. But I mean, you compare that to how they blew Westport away, they've shown clear scoring ability and then they've beaten the likes of Mount Bellew and Moylock on their way to this stage. So they've clearly proved themselves. And then when they get to Croke Park and they can play on the open surfaces and everything, I feel like they will flex their attack way more. Obviously, you mentioned the key moments. So two key moments I want to talk just before we move on from this game. Of course, the penalty miss. So Aaron Brannigan had pulled a goal back for Kilku. This was after the Glen had fired into the lead that they were in. Brannigan puts that goal into the back of the net. Kilku back into the game. Paul Delvin gets black carded. He's off for 10 minutes. Kilku stay in the game. Jerome Johnson then has fouled for a penalty just before half time, And Paul Devlin, who's just returned from his black card, puts the ball wide. That's a huge moment because instead of going in ahead, Kilku went in at half time, seven points to one, three down. They were one point down instead of being two points up. Psychologically on both sides, that plays a huge role because, as you mentioned, Wally Graham's then were better in the first half. And if they had gone in behind at half time, we might have seen their mentality questioned, their will questioned, their resolve. Then at the end, of course, the last minute goal from Alex Doherty, as you said there earlier, Q had kind of thrown caution to when we do have to throw the kitchen sink and they just got caught on the break. But I think those two key moments, I think the first goal missed, like the penalty miss, I think that set up Wadi Graham's Glen to dominate the second half, which then led to Kilku pushing up and then led to the last minute goal to top it off. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned psychologically, I think, you know, individually for Paul Devlin, that's you know the worst kind of scenario. You're coming straight back on after one error, and then in some ways you kind of make another error, you know, by putting the penalty wide mm -hmm. and you know a bit of a touch of Harry Kane kind of in some ways about the psychological stuff. You know that you're trying to drag yourself back then to you sort of in some ways feel like that it's your responsibility to drag the entire team back then because you feel like uh, you know I'm after missing this penalty. Could it change the game? As you said, they would have went in you know ahead at half time and yes yeah, psychologically it was a bit of a killer blow and then the other the flip side of psychology of it is that Waddy Graham's then are like completely buoyed by this and without actually scoring or doing anything whatsoever they've been given you know the push into the next gear which as we saw in the second half they were they were able to kind of I won't say ease <clears throat> ease the victory but uh you know they were able to put men behind the ball defensively they were well structured and they did like any good team will do when team was thrown the kitchen sink at them and you know the plug didn't come out of uh of glenn's defense they were able to push forward and the killer goal you know walking it into an empty net basically it's the icing on the cake for them so psychologically i think the penalty yeah you're right it's the change of the game if that goes in maliki o'rourke has a different completely different halftime team talk he's a completely different setup in the second half i think we'll get a different game whether Kilku go and win it it's hard to know um we'll never know i suppose but yeah it would have made for a completely different battle in the second half i think i would have been slightly disappointed if Kilku would have won mm -hmm. there's a little this little part of me just wanted to see glenn push on for that title and as you said i'm very excited about you know the game against Mike Cullen. Um, Mike Cullen obviously not littered with, you know, every Donegal star under the sun or every Galway star under the sun, I should say. You know, we've got Daisy Keneally, Sean Kelly, or whatever, a few others. But um, they're they're just a very disciplined team, and they're kind of coming in under the radar a little bit. But as you said, it, it could have against Strokestown and Tour de Strand. They could <laughs> they could have lost both those games, and it could be talking about a completely different team, you know, up against Glen, but. It'll make for an interesting game, whatever it is, January the, the 8th, I think, or whatever. So, yeah, I, I'm excited for the semi finals. I think they're going to be cracking games. I hope we don't get defensive shutouts, which, you know, mm -hmm. could happen, but I don't see it happening. I think Connor Glass is going to get the player of the match, player of the year. Just, I think he's going to get everything at the end of this. So, 